Yeah. Hello and welcome to the chapter two individual test with Mr. Goldman. Here we go. Number one, complete the scale on the number line at right. I see an 18 and I have some spaces to 33. Let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five spaces. And I need to add uh, 15 to 18 to get to 33. And 15 divided by five is three. I can also just have done this by checking, guess and check. So let's say uh, three, that would make this 21. Uh, add three, I get 24. Add three, I get 27. Add three, I get 30. Add three, I get 33. It works. Finishing both ways. Uh, 16 is not uh, 18 minus three, but 15 is. 36 and 39. All right. Now, here was the, the big problem on this test. Below is a table of data Myrtle collected while watching last week's football game. Set up an appropriate scale and plot the data from the table on the grid at right. Well, first of all, my minutes since start of game, since it's time and time marches on independent of anything else happening, uh, that's going to be my x-axis. All right, and I need to get all the way to 20. There's a lot of ways we could have done this. I'm going to do, I'm going to start here. And I'm going to go every two spaces is five. So that'd be five, 10, 15, 20. I probably could have spread it out a little bit more. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we'll do every three. Uh, yeah, we'll do every three spaces is five. So that's five, 10, 15, 20. All right. And then here, uh, for the number of people, I want to go up to 10. I can just go by ones. It's nice and easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five, two, three, four, three, nine, ten. And I'm going to label minutes. Since start of game, this is number of people at concession stand. All right. Uh, this is the majority of the work. I've scaled this appropriately. I've labeled uh, both X and Y axis. Now I just need to plot these points. So I go from 5 and I go up to 1. Uh, 10, I go up to 3, 15, I go all the way to 8, let's see, that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 20, I go all the way to 10, so that's 8, 9, 10. Oh, I need a title. Uh, let's just call it Football Game Snacks, right, because that's what you get at a concession stand is snacks. Oh. All right. uh, major problems here, we're not scaling these correctly. A lot of people switched these and put the minutes as the y-axis. Uh, we took a point off for that. Uh, and just make sure your points are plotted very neatly. Uh, neat work was an issue here. Moving on. I have five blue tiles, six green tiles, nine yellow tiles, and three red tiles. I shake the bag, reach in, and pull out a tile at random. What is the probability that the tile will not be green? How do you know? Well, uh, let's find out the probability of getting a green tile. And that is 6 out of, and if I add all these up, uh, 5 plus 6 is 11, plus 9 is 20, plus 3 is 23. And I know that probability of green plus probability of not green has to equal 1 because it's either green or not green. So I have 6 over 23 plus something equals 23 over 23. And that is 17 over 23. So probability of not green equals not just 17, but 17 over 23. Okay? You could have also just added... Uh, all the, you could have added five, nine, and three and gotten that as well. All right. Last one on this page. Uh, perimeter and area of the shape. We'll do perimeter first. I'm going to start here. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So my perimeter is 28 units. Now area. Area, I just count the squares. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 square units. You needed to put that. Uh, units in square units. All right. Moving on. Number five, a throwback to last chapter. Fraction, decimal, and percent. Well, if my fraction is three-fifths, uh, three divided by five is 0. 0.6, or I could have multiplied, yeah, three divided by five is 0. 0.6. For percent, I can either just convert this or multiply this by 20 over 20 is my giant one. Either way, I'll find it 60%. This is a little more challenging for us. This is 4 in the thousandths place, so the fraction is 4 over 1,000. When I go from decimal to percent, I move it over twice, so I'm going to get 0.4%, less than 1%. 250% is bigger than 1 because 100% is equal to 1, so 250% is 2.5. There's a lot of ways to show this as a fraction. Uh, you could have done 2.5. Uh, five halves I saw. Anything that's equivalent to 2.5 worked. Number seven. Will the decimal form of four to elevenths repeat or terminate? Explain how you know. Use long division in your reasoning. Be clear and complete. Well, first of all, I want to make sure that I'm doing four divided by 11 and not the other way around. So 11 goes into four zero times. Bring the decimal up. 11 goes into 40 three times. 3 times 11 is 33. Uh, my remainder is 7. So I'm going to bring the 0 down. 11 goes into 76 times. 6 times 11 is 66. My remainder is 4. Bring this down. And I get 40. And I have the same remainder again. So I know that this is going to repeat. 411 equals 0.36 with a line over both numbers because it repeats because I see the same remainder again. Right. Number eight, show two different ways to calculate three and one fourth times six and one eighth. Well, the first way, I'm going to uh, convert them to improper fractions. Four times three is 12, plus one is 13 fourths. This is equal to three and one fourth times uh, 8 times 6 is 48, plus 1 is 49 eighths. I'm going to go to my calculator. 13 times 49 is 637. And 4 times 8 is 32. And I believe this also equals 19 and 29 30 seconds. So that's using the improper fraction. Um, Another way we could do this is instead of 3 and 1 fourth times 6 and 1 eighth, this equals 3.25 times 6.125. 3.25 times 6.125 equals 19.9. Take that. Or we could have done the generic rectangle. Uh, and done six and one eighth. These numbers could have been switched. You could have had three and one fourth up here and six and one eighth down here, but it shouldn't change. Three times six is 18. Three times one eighth is not three and one eighth, it is three eighths. Six times one fourth is six fourths or <coughs> one and a half. And one eighth times one fourth is one thirty second. And you add all of these things plus uh, 6 fourths, plus 1 30 second, and you will get 19 and 29 30 seconds. 
So there are three ways. Make sure I show all that. Three ways. Decimals, generic rectangle, improper fractions. All right, number nine. After playing rock, paper, scissors, Montez had the pile of tiles shown it right. What is the value of his tiles? Explain how you know. I'm just going to rewrite them in a nice line. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight positive tiles. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve negatives. Uh, now I'm going to make zero pairs. And I'm left with negative four. So the value equals negative four. I didn't make to make these pluses. I was just verifying that I counted them. Um, explain how you know. You could also written this out. I saw a lot of people do this. This is eight plus negative 12 equals negative four. But there's your answer. The extra credit. Estime read 12 pages from her science book last night, and it took her 18 minutes. So we'd set that up as 12 pages, 18 minutes. How long will it take her to read tonight's homework, which is 22 pages long? So we're going to set up equivalent ratios, 22 pages to some number of minutes. 12 over 18 is the same as uh, 2 thirds, right? So this all should equal 2 thirds. So uh, you're using a giant one of 11 over 11. I'll get 22 over 33. So 22 pages in 33 minutes. So 33 minutes is my answer. Again, that was extra credit. Uh, we'll get into a lot more of those in later chapters. Uh, thank you. Can I have a, a round of applause from the audience? Showing how great that was. Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.